Welcome back to the Road Less Traveled podcast. We are diving in to solo travel this week and I'm so excited because it truly is one of my very favorite things to do. Yeah, and uh, a lot of you have been asking about this for an episode, so uh, asking y'all shall receive. And I haven't, I haven't done solo travel in a hot minute because I have a husband and two kids now, and I love that. And if you're listening and you're like, mm, same, I'm in a same life, this a similar life stage. Like I, I don't foresee myself doing solo travel anytime soon. That's something you do in your twenties. I would just ask you to listen with an open mind because. Truly, if you've never done it before, I would urge every single person on the planet, like if you're able to travel solo at least once in your lifetime, because it will forever change you. Like it can even be like the next state over, you know, it doesn't have to be anything huge. But if you're listening and you're like, ah, this episode is not for me. Au contraire. Yeah. Well, I just want to go on the record here and say as a Mom, now, Les, if you would like to go and do a solo trip, I give you permission to go anywhere for as long as you'd like. <laughs> We're here in Little Rock. I've got your parents as backup. <laughs> the kids are in daycare. And, uh, yeah, I think it's really important to take that time out for yourself when you need it. So if you need a solo trip, babe, just put it on the calendar. Uh, husband of the year. Husband of yeah. the year. Yeah, it's even hearing you say that, it's like, oh, that would be so nice. But then the mom guilt starts to creep in. I mean, and I know you're shaking your head like, no, do it. No, but fuck the mom guilt. You've got, you have <laughs> to. I know. And dad guilt, you have to take time out for yourself, reset, get back to neutral. Mm-hmm. We're all in like fifth gear. And I think it's really important. Yeah. Speaking of like, you know, getting back to yourself. Oh my God. I woke up this morning like so depleted and I'm going to go ahead and blame. I don't know if it was starting my period at 1 a.m. or the eclipse. I'm going to go eclipse. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we we got to touch on the eclipse. I'm I'm coming down. That was my first full solar eclipse, and at the path of totality came straight through the middle of Arkansas, which is where we're living right now. And um, two friends flew out from LA. Well, one drove, one flew, and to come out and capture it. And it was very very special. And the weather was kind of touch and go there a few days ago, and the skies opened up and. We got full totality in all its glory. Yeah. It was so cool. It was wild. It was so cool. It makes me think back to 2017. I don't know where anybody was during that eclipse, but like, I don't feel like it was talked about as much as this one. This one just like took off on the news, social media, like you couldn't escape it. Yeah. I mean, it was wild. Uh, We we were out in Lake Washita, um, not far from Les's parents' lake house, beautiful, like, 200 plus islands, national forest. We scouted our position the day before we got out there, set up the cameras and uh, it was just really, really special. Like I captured it and I was looking at some of the footage today on my my big cinema camera and I see it looks like a UFO going through the frame from left to right. Like, and it's like swirling. And because I was shooting in slow-mo, anyway, I'm going to put it up on the YouTube channel for people to have a look at. Let us know what you guys think that is. I, I haven't even seen it. I know, because it's rendering right now. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. This is brand new to me. What? But it's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was wild. I, during the, whenever it's happening next, I think 20 years from now, 2044 mm-hmm. is the yeah. next one that hits the United States. I, <clears throat> I think I'm going to be one of those people to travel to the path of totality if it's not going over yeah. wherever I am at the time. Yeah. Like it was that cool it was surreal like when it it's coming through when it's slowly getting darker and we had a long totality of four minutes which is really it quite long for solar eclipses and um it was just amazing and because i was so in my cameras you know watching the shot i almost stopped to like stop myself to look up and have a look and then i was like oh my gosh this is so special you and i weren't we were in the same place for the eclipse, but we weren't together for the eclipse. So we had very different yeah. experiences. Yeah. Like I was very present. I experienced the whole thing rather than being, seeing it through the camera lens. Yeah. And so truly like it started getting closer and closer to 1.52 PM, which is the time of totality. And it almost felt like as the moon was slowly going over the sun, it felt like, 
you were looking through a bad, like you were looking at a bad picture. Like you mm-hmm. took a really bad photo with horrible settings mm-hmm. and like that's kind of what the world looked like. Yeah. Because it was just getting darker in the daylight. Like it had this tent over mm-hmm. it. And then boom, totality hits. Everything goes dark. Everything quiets. The wind settles. The The birds start chir- stop chirping. And the world kind of stands still. And for just a moment, like everybody is brought together by this phenomenon yeah. and celestial occurrence that, you know, only comes every so often. It was just magical. I think it's a, uh, a reminder of how small we are as humans, just like these planets. And you think about maths and geometry and science and it's just this perfect alignment. It was just it was spectacular. I really highly recommend anyone that hasn't witnessed one. I believe there's one happening in Iceland next year, which is going to be very popular. Obviously, it's at different places in different parts of the earth. So get on a plane if you want and go and see it. Not a bad place for solo travel. Very, very (laughs) cool place. It's going to be expensive because Iceland's expensive, but so remote, so beautiful. I haven't been there, but yeah, highly recommend it. Mm. So anyway, uh, if you're feeling like me just drained after such an event, you're not alone. I woke up so depleted and I think it's all about grounding. Like I really just need to lay on mother earth and like just get her, (laughs) her energy and nutrients and like actually ground down because I am feeling it. I will say you, you picked up a lot of the slack this weekend, you know, I had the friends come over and I'm entertaining and doing a lot of two kids looking after them. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for allowing me to go and, capture that but we've also just we've been non-stop for quite a while now and it's it's good it's all good things we've had some great news the last week and things are great but yeah being small business owners it's like it's exhausting and alex is like hey let's start a podcast (laughs) (laughs) hey hey at the start of the year let's start a podcast when, when we have a brand new baby and look what we weren't as busy then and i was like i was getting itchy feet and uh leslie agreed to it but everyone's messages we're getting emails now and feedback and giving us topic ideas like today's episode the feedback's been really positive and and thank you everyone for supporting mm-hmm. us it does it gives us that boost to like show up every week and your put on listens, a good show your downloads your subscribes they help immensely yeah it yeah. means a lot to us and uh this aussie battler who uh convinced leslie to do it i think it's great it's just this I don't know, every week we get to produce this episode and mm-hmm. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it and uh, I'm excited for wh- what what is ahead. What's to come. But let's uh, let's circle back to solo travel. Circle back. You sound like a Monday email from or a colleague a, you don't want to hear from. Or a moon eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> but a... Les, I'm going to hit you with some questions, I think. like I think a lot of our listeners want to know what... What were some of your first solo trips or what was your first solo trip? It, 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 it's not a popular um, place that you would want to travel solo as your first trip. It's not, it wouldn't come up on your mind as, hmm, I need to go here as a woman, you know, as a, as a solo female traveler. But for some reason, I decided that first place was going to be Beijing, China. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh it was ambitious. Yeah. Um and it was Yeah, I look back and I I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as your very first stop as a solo traveler. Oh man, where to be even begin? So I it was it was part of a much longer trip over with my mom and we had hit countries like Thailand and Singapore where else did we go? The Maldives together, which was so magical. And we had tri- we had spent one night in Hong Kong together before she left. So technically, I guess my first place by myself was Hong Kong, but mm-hmm. I soon thereafter traveled to Beijing, China. And I get there and I'm working with a hotel and I'm checked in and I'm trying to get on my computer that evening, do some work nothing's working for me. There are, you know, I can't get on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. So I go down to the front desk and I'm like, Hey, I think like your internet's not working. Can we, can we troubleshoot that? And they look at me and they're like, "Mm, those are blocked in China, ma'am. 
Like you can't, you can't access these sites in China, which was so, I was like, ah, right. And, Com and com communism, right? Yes. Control what the people see and hear. And I need a VPN. So I very quickly learned about what a virtual private network was and logged on through that. And and it was a learning curve from then on out. Uh, I walked the Great Wall of China by myself. Well, not by myself. I was probably with, you know, thousands of other tourists. But talk about a memory that stands out in my memory bank. Mm. Um, I felt really empowered then. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool mm -hmm. to walk such uh, a landmark alone. How was navigating that from your hotel to get to the Great Wall of China? Was it far? Like, how did you get there? I don't remember the distance. I do remember getting in a taxi from the hotel. Okay. So I had a lot of faith in that taxi. Mm -hmm. Like it could get me from point A to point B instead mm -hmm. of like hailing it on the on a random yep. street corner. Uh, and then, and I guess I must have, you know, said a time to meet me again to go back to the hotel after, after that activity event. I do remember it was where a really sketchy thing happened though in my travels. Like some people are like, have you ever been in trouble or have you ever witnessed anything like really sketch, sketchy or scary on your travels? And this one does stand out. I was, I was actually hailing a cab from a street corner somewhere in Beijing and I get in and you know, when you're just, you can just, Oh, the air is heavy and like, it just doesn't feel right there was a taxi driver and then there was somebody else in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. So that was odd to begin with. Usually yeah. when you're in a yeah, cab, it's odd. just one, the driver. And obviously they were going back and forth. I don't know Mandarin. I didn't speak the language and I could just, it just felt off. And you really have to trust those instincts mm -hmm. more than ever, especially when you're alone. Cause that's all you have. Yeah. And I just, I got more frightened as time went on. And it was a really busy street. And so, and there were a lot of red lights. So we would come up on, you know, these stoplights here and there. And I just remember we were at a red light and I just hightailed it out of that cab. Didn't pay, didn't say anything. I mean, there was already a massive language barrier, but I just felt super unsafe. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm fucking out. Yeah. Like, I don't trust the situation. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of here. I think that's really important uh, to trust your instinct always you know especially my, as a, a solo female traveler mm -hmm. yeah my dad calls it you know being street smart like street wise like being just feeling and being a you know aware and alert of your surroundings is really important you were obviously very dialed into like that immediate feeling yeah and i think that was great you tapped into that and just like see ya another place that i've I, i've also you know obviously been by myself probably the most in Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is a massive city. Mm -hmm. It's so big. Um, I was probably at best conversational at one point, <laughs> probably not anymore. But at one point when I was living there, <laughs> I could speak enough to where I could get around for sure. But that living, living in such a big city, a foreign city taught me to be absolutely aware, to have your phone, you know, hidden somewhere in your pocket in your bag that's strapped across your body because I I was always told like don't have your phone out on a street corner motorcyclists are just going to come by and grab it out of your hand mm -hmm. or just come walk up to you and grab it out of your hand and run off and that actually did happen once where some guy tried to corner me at a crosswalk and I was like oh hell no <laughs> and like I just like turned away real fast and ran off yeah but it happened to countless friends while living there and working mm -hmm. there I remember our IT guy came into the office at 9 a.m. one day, just bloodied from a knife fight Jesus. because I guess maybe whoever his assailant was like knew he was carrying all these computers yeah. or something. And mm -hmm. so it happened like right outside our office mm -hmm. where I got in a knife fight and like I was cue me like scrubbing mm -hmm. the blood from our foyer mm -hmm. in our office. Yeah. Um, and so you just have to be wildly aware of your surrounding uh, surroundings and listen to that gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's exhausting. Like you will get home to your uh, hotel that evening mm -hmm. and notice the exhaustion just from being aware yeah. all day long. How old were you when you went to Beijing? And then how old were you when you were living in Buenos Aires? Beijing, I was probably, uh, that was 27, mm -hmm. I was 27 or 28. Mm -hmm. 
in Beijing, mm -hmm. Buenos Aires. I was living there when I was 25 and 26 and 27. Yeah. I think whilst, whilst we're talking about South America, because, you know, we've run some retreats down there, we've, we've run group retreats down there and, you know, one of our participants or two in separate incidents and we let everybody know in the emails and leading up to it about pickpocketing and, you know, these thieves that are opportunists in the big cities um, of Santiago and Buenos Aires. And, yeah, one of the girls had a necklace snatched off her. What they do is they come up on motor motorbikes. They usually in gangs of two or more. So one will be on the moped or motorcycle driving. The other will be on the back ready to jump off, snatch the jewelry, like rip it off you, and then they just jump back on the scooter and then they're out of there. So um, that happened to one of the girls in our, in our group setting while we were walking the streets and she was, you know, very – shook up from it and happened in a group of people. Yeah, I think there were a small group. I didn't see it at the time. Yeah. Um, but she was pretty shaken up by it. And it it does happen. And I would just say, you know, caution everybody against traveling with jewelry. Yeah. Any family heirlooms, like just flashy jewelry, watches, just just leave it at home when you're going to countries like that because it does. It, it makes you a target. Mm. And thieves are opportunists and they'll see you and they'll target you. And when you least expect it, boom, that's when they'll strike. Yeah, sadly it happened again um, before a lim limitless trip began in Santiago and another woman had a, a really yeah. a family heirloom rip, ripped off her neck and she was really shaken up by it. And I feel for both of those women and it does happen and you just, again, be aware of your yeah. surroundings. Don't wear your your favorite jewelry, your nice jewelry, leave it mm -hmm. at home. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't let this you know, deter you from traveling to these places because yeah. I mean, they're amazing. Um, and you just have to know the ins and the outs mm -hmm. and the, but if you, and the what to do, if you go into a trip like that, listening to an episode like this and, and taking that advice of not wearing jewelry and stuff, it makes you less of a target and makes the trip more positive, you know, and less likely of something bad to happen. So yeah. The fact of the matter is every city has its, yeah. I mean, Sydney, I got I got robbed in Sydney when I was a young yeah, teenager. There you go. Uh, if you're in New York right now or L.A., a big city, you know, women have been getting hit. And let's uh, let's rephrase that to men are accosting and hitting women. Don't take the men out of that yeah. equation. Well, I didn't didn't mean to like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, don't I I always see these headlines right now. <clears throat> and it, it's it's true. Like people are taking men out of the headlines and and it's bullshit. Yeah, well, I wasn't insinuating anything. I was just saying those those incidents are happening in 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 this country. So I'm a feminist, if you can't tell. Yeah, well, I'm on your side. Okay, <laughs> no, don't, you don't, are. don't bring the good guys down. <laughs> but yeah, th it happens in the U.S. And you know, as a as a filmmaker and a photographer, you know, a lot of my friends' gear has been stolen. So you just you have to be very hyper alert. Mm -hmm. And that's in San Francisco, one of the wealthiest cities. Countless friends have had bags, oh, yeah. 10, 20, 30, 40,000 dollars worth of equipment stolen in seconds, smash and grab. So, no matter where you are in the world, just you have to be alert of your things. For sure. Let's get into the positives of oh my solo gosh. travel because honestly, they truly, truly outweigh any negatives. But really, we do, do. want to be realistic and, and tell you our stories. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think you just, you got to be. Definitely do those things and the pros well, outweigh the cons. Hit us with some of the positives, Les. How has solo travel affected your your life? Yeah. In, in, tell us. Go for it. <laughs> I've probably been to about 15 solo uh, countries solo in my life. And I think they it, solo travel is so magical. And let me count the ways. First of all, though, I think... If you are able to do it just once in your life, I urge you to just do it once. Mm -hmm. Please do it once and see how it feels, how it affects you and how it changes you mm -hmm. because it will. Yeah. I think it allows you so much understanding about the world, so much growth. Um, it allows you presence like, like you won't have with any other kind of travel because you are by yourself and you notice so much more your senses are heightened your awareness is heightened everything is heightened and i think that just allows you so much mm -hmm. the growth um understanding about other cultures 
Open mindedness. Open mindedness. I mean, yeah. truly, you you notice so much more than if you are with a companion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're just more present in that destination, and you meet. You're more apt to meet other people, more people than if you were with somebody at a bar, at a restaurant, standing and waiting for public transportation, walking down the street. You meet so many more people and have so mm-hmm. many more conversations than you would if you were traveling with somebody else. Agreed. I think it forces you to get outside your comfort zone and yeah, go to places. Then you're like, you're, you are, you're more inclined to meet people. Uh, Les and I were talking before this about my solo travel and I haven't done, you know, lots of solo travel. I had one trip that I planned solo and then one of my friends ended up meeting me down there, but I flew down there solo and I had about three days by myself and had to meet him uh, at a certain place in, in Patagonia. But the journey down by myself was just so, it was so out of left field for me. And I felt I was just navigating this, you know, this different country and stayed in Santiago by myself. And I went and flew my drone up on that hill with the big thing. And I'm like walking around and I was in neighborhoods and I felt unsafe in some areas. And then I just kind of like alert myself. I'm like, okay, cool. I need to get off back on track into this other area. And I just loved it. I loved getting lost and just. And then found. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and I met this man um, from Santiago to uh, Punta Arenas, uh, who was one of the, the eldest um, guys to a first um, guy in his seventies to summit Mount Everest uh, and film it with a GoPro. And I ended up chatting with him on the plane, and then he was staying at the hotel, and I had dinner with him, and he was just so wise, and he was Canadian, and just it was great. I just and I was. And, and, and you were, look at look at you. You remember that, and these yeah. memories stand out. He really left an impact on me, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's in his seventies, and he was actually hiking the seven volcanic summits Sweet. of the world." And I think he was up to his like fourth or fifth. And I was like, "And I'm like in my twenties, and I'm like, geez, you're in your seventies, and you're just carving up these mountains, these volcanic summits." And I'm like, he made me feel uh, very like inadequate. I was like, I need to be doing more. This guy in his seventies just killing it. So yeah, it was it was really inspiring to meet him, and yeah, he left an impact on me. Inadequate traveling to the southernmost <laughs> tip of the world, camping in ferocious seventy mile per hour winds. I don't I don't think so. But yeah, it was that was really cool. That was kind of my one solo travel. That met I ended up meeting up with a friend, but there were solo elements to it, and it did. It got me out of my comfort zone, and it it helped me grow. And it does yeah, it really truly does. I think. I've been to China and Hong Kong by myself, which were interesting all over China by myself. And, and it's so you just you experience things that you would never experience anywhere else. Like all these locals would come up to me in in Beijing, Shanghai and Hangzhou to take pictures with me. Not certainly not because they'd watch The Bachelor, <laughs> but because <laughs> not, I, not there. <laughs> I had blonde hair. I, well, I think I was white and had blonde hair and they were at the time just like in awe mm. of somebody like that. Yeah. And I mean, I love taking pictures with them. I yeah. mean, it's just something I'd never thought would happen. Um, all over Europe by myself, nor- started in Norway. Mm-hmm. I flew to Norway by myself for a campaign. And, uh, and I'm so happy because had I not previously been there, I don't know that I would have chosen to go to that country for our Mm -hmm. first trip together, Sweden, Copenhagen, Germany, uh, Switzerland, Mexico, Mm -hmm. Canada. Mm. Canada is amazing. Let's talk about where, if you're listening to this thinking like, where should I go for my, just going to ask you this (laughs) first, first country by myself. Um, if you, if you're super nervous, I would say choose and you're in the U S choose a different state. Or Australia. I'm not I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> Just calm down. Uh, I would say choose a different state. You do not have to go far to, for this to have a massive impact. Yep. Otherwise, if you're looking to cross a border, Canada is spectacular. Mm-hmm. Let me count that part of me wants to be Canadian. Uh, it's it's just such an amazing country. Obviously, no, there's no um, language barrier. The there's nobody friendlier than a Canadian. It's so friendly. Uh, there's Love Canadians. tons of wilderness to be alone in nature. Obviously one of the best 
perks of traveling alone is meeting other people. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also so beautiful, the opportunity to to heal from anything you need, you need healing from. The nature there is I'm just automatically thinking of my trip to Canada um, when we just started dating and just the lakes and the nature and the fresh air, I think. And it, and it is, it's so healing. Mm. It's beautiful. Mother nature. She's just truly, she gives and gives and gives. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, to be surrounded by the Canadian lakes and the wilderness, the, oh, the sheer amount of wilderness, take the bear spray. I mean, I, I, when I went by myself, I remember I was smack dab in the middle <laughs> of this long hike by myself, middle of the woods. And I was like, shit, I have no bear spray. There's nobody here to save me. And there are big grizzly bears out there. And who knows if that would have saved me. I mean, I think, you know, the the deal here is to be loud, play music, and Mm -hmm. that'll just, you know, keep them at bay anyway. Yeah. Hopefully, fingers and toes crossed. But it really was a fantastic place to solo travel. Yeah. Um, it's actually reminding me of my trip to Canada, and I met these two Canadians uh, through a friend, and we went camping, and... They had the the camping tents on top of their cars, and then Hugo and I were on the floor, and we were out way back country, like grizzly country. And the Canadian dad like goes to me, gives me this giant can of bear spray. He's like, "Just sleep with that under your pillow." I'm like, "What's that?" Like Australian? Like he goes, "That's bear spray." He goes, "I'm not joking either." <laughs> I don't think I would have slept at all that. But night. <laughs> it was the most beautiful. Like we camped, we lit the fire with new people I just met. Found millions and trillions of stars and shooting stars. It was beautiful. Oh. I love Canada. I love Canada. Canada, we love you. Yeah. Um, what else? What other countries would people love as first destinations? <sighs> well, I think, you know, I, I think if you're scared of a language barrier, which please don't be, I think that's only normal, but there are so many ways around a language mm-hmm. barrier. So many through, obviously, like, you know, any translation apps mm-hmm. to hand gestures. Yep. To the Duolingo. You know, my, yeah. my friend Mike. Shout who out we Duolingo. Just, my, my, my friend Mike that just uh, came to do the eclipse, he just went to Colombia by himself and he met a Colombian girl who didn't speak a lick of English and he doesn't speak Spanish and they connected through attraction, but he got out the app and they communicated and he's like fallen he- head over heels for this Colombian girl. and Medellin. He, and he just Medicine. said he, it was just so great. Yeah. And so that, that was really cool to hear about his solo travel experience just a few weeks ago. So true. So yeah. true. But I think, you know, the obvious ones would be Canada because there's no real language barrier unless you're in Quebec, of course, or the UK mm-hmm. or um, the obvious Australia. Australia. We love New- Australia. Australia, New Zealand. I think Italy and France are are great countries and it's I, I will say I first visited Italy back in like I don't know I think it was 15 or so mm-hmm. and I remember at the time just being so head over heels in love with it and thinking oh this place is so romantic I'm not going to come back here until I'm with a boyfriend or yeah. a spouse or whoever and looking <clears> back that's so funny I mean I truly didn't go back until our honeymoon mm-hmm. so like I really spoke that into existence but I, I would say that's bullshit. Don't wait for anything. Like yeah. life is short and just go and do it. Italy yeah. is a great place for solo travel. I think too, take a deep dive into yourself and like, what, 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 what do you want? Where do you want to go? What, you know, what, what are you leaning towards? And just, if there's somewhere you're leaning towards, like go for it, just like go in the deep end. If it's somewhere a little more difficult, a little more challenging, like South America or, or or Africa somewhere, I think just just do it. But obviously, be careful, be safe, and yeah, yeah. I think there are obviously harder or more challenging places that you could go as a solo traveler. But on the other side, I think there's even more empowerment there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that could be anywhere in South America. And I think you know if you're if you're not looking to do you know, like the Canada, the UK, the Australia, I think other places that would be really great are Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about like wellness in a, like just packed in a country. I haven't been and I'm dying to go to Costa Rica. Ugh, it's not, you know, it's not too far, but it has everything. The surf is amazing. The jungles, the coffee, the food, the people. I hear it's spectacular. Um, kind of riding on that same like wellness journey is Bali. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bali's basically like the American Mexico. All the Australians go to Bali because it's really close and we love the Balinese people. So that's a, that's a great destination, great surf, great um, – yoga and wellness and have you your know. your eat pray love moment yeah so love bali um i think one that always comes to mind is thailand mm-hmm. i love thailand i feel like it has a few different sides to it which is mm-hmm. what i love about it you know the north is vastly different from the south um there are tons of backpackers and opportunities mm-hmm. to meet other travelers and make friends yeah. if you're looking to have a good time and party uh full moon parties are pretty Pretty awesome. I can put my hand up and say I have been to one on New Year's Eve and it was crazy. So if you're looking for a good time and you're younger and that's that's really, really fun and you're just surrounded by all these foreigners and, yeah, you never know who you're going to meet. I feel like that's one country – I mean – uh, truly every country can be this way, but you can do it as, you know, inexpensive, cheap budget travel mm-hmm. in Thailand Especially or just countries. splurge on, you yeah. know, with the five star hotels I there. Mean, you can get great accommodation. there, really cheap in Thailand. It's, yeah. Yeah. I love, oh, Thai food. The world mm. is your oyster. Mm. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, there's. Portugal, which has so many sides. Mm-hmm. I mean, Portugal would be great for solo travel couple travel, family travel, like it kind of yep. has it all. Um, yeah. To one that's kind of like out there in left field for solo travel, Dubai. Okay. I think I, Dubai was never on my radar. Um, and then the the person I was actually traveling with, and I think it was 2017, maybe 2016, 2016. She was like, okay, while we're over on this side of the world, we, we really weren't very near it anyway. I think we were in we were in Cambodia and Vietnam and she was like, well, we're over here. I want to go to Dubai. And I was like, okay. I mean, I'm not going to say no to mm-hmm. that. It was never on my radar. It, I love when places surprise you. Yeah. And that one surprised me. Yeah. It was awesome. I mean, talk about like Superman made and like the most opulent place you'll ever be in your lifetime. But it also had this other side to it in old Dubai with all the spice markets and the gold markets and it really the beginning of their honey there too, aren't they? Surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been, so I, I can't speak to it, but I, I would love to go. And then there's Abu Dhabi for like another side that's really close, um, but in the desert. Friend of mine's in uh, Bahrain right now working, which is apparently really friendly to Westerners. Okay. Vietnam and Cambodia that I went to in my twenties, I wasn't solo, I was with an ex, but it is spectacular. Vietnam, that whole coastal North, South, Hoi An, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Cambodia with the Angkor Wat temples and Angkor Thom and just, oh, there's there's a lot of history there. And you're like, how did they build these things? I would say Cambodia and Vietnam would be amazing places to do solo travel. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I love both those places. I can see that being completely fine. I think Southeast Asia as a whole um, is so great for solo travel. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're on a budget, I mm-hmm. think you can keep that really low. Yeah. Um, kind of uh, country hopping over there. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of um, countries. Uh, I think we should uh, dive into some questions that we got. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to start hitting you, Les. These are from our audience. So Hit me. me. Okay. First one from uh, Mel. How to know you'll have fun by yourself without sharing the memories with someone else? That's a good question. I think it's, I think it's a lot. I I think solo travel, if when you're just starting out and you've never done it, you had a lot, you have a lot of questions in mind. Like, what is this going to be like? How is, how am I going to have fun with my own company is probably the biggest question. And it will surprise the shit out of you. Yeah, it really will. I mean, truly, I think, I think maybe, maybe skills, the wrong word, but one of the biggest skills in life is to learn to love your own company. Mm hmm. Um, Because at the end of the day, I mean, we are all we have. Mm -hmm. But when you are in another country and the sheer amount of freedom that you have, I I think we take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And you can do anything you want. If that means, you know, uh, room service for dinner. If that means lounging and just like hanging out in your hotel room for the whole morning. Or you want to go here for dinner or you want to go see this attraction. Um, You know, a bad travel companion can really ruin a trip. Yeah, they can be Debbie Downers and bring you down. But the best advice I could give is like 
go to the bar, go to the restaurant, eat solo. And like, you never know who you're going to meet or like the, the person working there might give you some advice for a place nearby. And it's just get out of your comfort zone. I think it's, yeah. It's fun. That yeah. in and of itself will be fun. I mean, I remember when I came to the US for the first time, I was with a friend, but we'd go out and we'd hit bars and like, you know, we ha- I had him, but it was just like you, you'd end up meeting people and you're talking and interacting and you'd, I would have done the same solo anyway, um, but some great memories. And you I know? think, you know, you can get you can get um, caught up in all these questions, like how to do it, where to go, what to do, how do you know you'll have fun? But I think you just got to do it. Yeah. Like you just got to do it and be you and the rest will come. You'll get back from that trip and you'll be hooked. Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these questions we've kind of already touched on. What do you do to stay safe? This is a great question. Like, what do you do to stay safe uh, when you're traveling? Well, I do think the the first thing that came to mind was, uh, you know, obviously be aware of your surroundings. And I I don't say that lightly. I think we can easily just be like this passive traveler, looking at on our phone, scrolling Instagram. But I would say put the phone away and look up. Yeah. You know, lift the gaze instead of looking down at the phone, lift your gaze, be aware, be present. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be underestimated. Yeah. Uh, The next thing that came to mind was always bring a portable phone charger because uh, I hate to say it, but like we do so much on our phones and we hail, you know, cabs on our phones. It's so funny because Mm -hmm. I'm like, for, First, I'm like, put the phone down. Mm-hmm. But next, I'm like, take your portable charger. Yeah. So that you will, you can always have something at your fingertips if you need help. Yeah. And that, that you know, that very important thing in your pocket is it isn't dead. Yeah. Here's another question, which is going to be an extension of the previous question. Five best safety tips. Uh, you know, I think when traveling, one of the best safety tips I could give you is go to the US Department of State website and check the country's travel advisories. There there are four levels um, that the government does and you know they have US consulates in all of these countries and they're very dialed into current events and they're updating this frequently. Uh, so there's level one, which is green, which is basically you're good, level two, yellow, and then at you know, level three, reconsider travel, level four, do not travel. So I would number one before booking go to that state department travel advisory website and do your research and make sure the place where you're going you know you've, you've got all the information you need going in because that automatically gives you a level of safety i feel one travel tip that i think is great and i'm going to probably be putting them on nora soon <laughs> is just air tags there's all these wearable devices now like wristband watches you can put them in the sole of your shoes or a necklace hair you can put them in scrunchies or or whatever you want to put them put an air tag in a couple of places and share that air tag with your family and your friends share your location yeah i i we haven't shared our location with each other which i think is is dumb yeah i don't know if you're hiding anything from me but (laughs) (laughs) i have shared my location with um both of my assistants and so they know where i am at all times yeah and vice versa I think that's really important. Use the technology to your advantage because then if something does happen, like people know your last whereabouts or they can see actively where you are and I think that's really important to use technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's that's two, safety. Uh, This is one from a a male perspective. My dad was a karate teacher for 10 years. Maybe go and take a self-defense class. I've always wanted to do that. I think it's really important. I did karate and I, you know, I learned how to defend myself from a knife attack. If you're, you know, a woman, the best thing you can do is go for a man's nuts straight away if you are in a situation and just just kick the nuts. You know what I mean? That will disable a man very, very quickly. Check. Um, but yeah, a self-defense <laughs> class will, will really help build your confidence yeah. and give you some skills for a worst case scenario. I would event. love to do that. I think Let's that do is it. invaluable. Let's yeah, go do it. For sure. I'm so down. I think it's really great for everyone to do that. That's um, a piece of advice. I think know that know the the kind of um, ride share you're getting into. You <laughs> yeah. know, don't just take any 
taxi. Yeah. Especially when you get to an airport in a foreign country and all these people are coming up to you saying, taxi, taxi, taxi. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of always put a hand up to those people. Yeah. And there's just other, like, we already touched on this, but don't take expensive jewelry. Don't wear (laughs) things that make yourselves a, a victim. Leave the Gucci bag at home or the Louis Vuitton or whatever and just travel, travel light. Um, things that you don't mind losing. Uh, something a friend of mine did in Brazil, which actually saved him, he got robbed by knife point um, at the World Cup. So that was quite a while ago at the Soccer World Cup. And he had two wallets. So he gave them the dummy wallet, which had some small money in it and just some fake cards. Mm. So he gave them, he didn't get stabbed, but he just gave them what what they wanted, which was a wallet. So that could be a really good piece of advice is travel with two wallets. And there's these concealed um, card um, holders now, which are also have the radio frequency, like that it can, you know, they can't steal your information. Put your bank and your debit and credit cards in that, in, you know, in beneath in beneath your waistband, and then have like a fake wallet or something. So if if you do get approached and you know at knife point or something like that, give them a fake wallet. At least then they have something and they leave you alone. Of course, another one would be to have some kind of closure on your handbag. So whether that be you know a backpack, a crossbody, a purse, like have some kind of closure. And have a good handle on it um, rather than when I traveled to Spain, when I was studying abroad, I got pickpocketed twice Mm -hmm. in one day. Yeah. They saw me coming. Yeah. And that's the thing. Again, if you're being a bit blasé and willy nilly with your bags and your things, they'll do it in Italy too or France. They have some of the best pickpocketers in the world. It's an art form. So, and, And they are. They just see thousands of victims and they're just waiting for someone to drop their guard Take the pictures and then boom, your bag's gone or your your wallet out of your bag that you left open getting your phone out. So be alert and aware of your things. Zip them up. Hold them tight. Yeah. Yeah. We, we saw some incidents in Italy where I think someone got – they were pointing out a pickpocketer and, yeah, the locals know who they are. So they're around. All right, more questions. This has been a lot and we've already touched on, on these, but um, what is your favorite – destination les like i know you said a lot but what was your favorite destination that you've traveled to as a solo traveler because that people have heard all the general (laughs) ones but what's your number one i loved copenhagen copenhagen i think it was kind of a tie between uh, canada specifically banff and copenhagen both just ridiculously effortless as it felt like um, kind of going around in terms of, you know, being able to communicate and get around the t- the city in mm-hmm. a safe way. The comfortability I felt doing all of those things. Both both of those places are just easy and fun and mm-hmm. they you go home with so much more than you bargained for. Um, yeah. Copenhagen. OK. Loved Copenhagen. I mean, I, I can't speak to too many, but my mine was um, the Chilean Patagonia side. I, I had a, an absolute ball down there doing my solo thing. And um, I prefer being away from the big cities, mountains. You know, you're very safe. You're in nature. Not much can happen out there. I will say I, I got lost. I put uh, the GPS in and it took me this old gravel road and there was a paved road, but it was like so cool, no pun intended, to go the road less traveled. But um, sh- and it was just spectacular. I felt like sick a bit because I was so deep into it, but I committed and I just kept going and the road kept going and I eventually got to where I needed to go. But it was really cool to be uncomfortable and not go the main way, you know? Yeah, I think that's that's so cool. You kind of have to have that like explorer's manifesto in mind when traveling and especially traveling solo and know that things might not always go according to plan and you have to be flexible Mm -hmm. and you have to try new things. I just pulled something, something up under explorer's manifesto and I want to just read it quickly. It's all about disconnecting and leaving home, enjoying the journey and not be obsessed with the final destination packing light because too much baggage weighs us down and slows us down. Go far. Extraordinary things happen at the limits of possibility. <clears throat> Dare I say when things are limitless, forget the time. Try not to plan the beginning and the end of events. 
walk. Yes. Walk wherever you can. When you walk, you can look at things more closely and carefully. And walking is an action, the speed of which is natural and comfortable. Take one step at a time. You can deviate from the route. Often the most valuable experiences are found on the least traveled route. Dare I say the road less traveled? Um, Go outside when it rains. Things are different and appear different than when the sun is shining. Ask questions. Find out about the things you can see along the way. Try new flavors. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. The food and drink in each place has its own flavors, smells, and colors. Revel in that. Mm. Don't stop. Movement keeps us alive and new experiences nourish us. But also stop. (laughs) Pauses are just as important as movement. Stop and breathe deeply. Look, listen, take a break, take a breath. Talk with people. There's nothing like conversation for getting to know other people. Listen to stories about the place. The present is enriched and better understood by hearing about the past. And then, of course, protect nature. Make sure that your journey through each place leaves no trace for those who come after you. So huge. I love that. Wow. I just kind of, that took me back to some moments in my travel that things, they just, it's all about timing and place. And you put yourself in this place and then timing and a moment happens when you were talking about food that, that, that automatically took me back to Vietnam for, for a bit. And uh, yeah, just travel, just, it just makes you better. As a human, it, it opens your mind. It's just and a beautiful thing. It's it's cliche because I think this is one of the biggest, like most popular travel quotes out there, but it turns you into a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I've told this story so many times, but it is one of my favorites, but also scariest. And you had the pleasure of uh, editing the story of the one time I stayed in it in a haunted hotel in Sri Lanka. So creepy. I was getting creeped out editing it. It was so weird. So I... Uh, uh, that is probably my biggest and best solo travel story. Mm-hmm. And uh, it happened in 2017. It was the last country I visited before I flew home and started filming the um, Bachelor Winter Games. And it uh, sometimes it still leaves me speeches thinking back on it. But I, I filmed everything, everything I, I filmed. I was by myself for this trip, solo travel filmed everything and that happened where I stayed in a haunted hotel by myself and I just sat on that footage for years and years and years until 2021 when I was pregnant with Nora and I had you edit it (laughs) yeah I mean it's weird I I just still remember the crib it sits on on the YouTube channel if you want to go and have a look but this old crib from probably a hundred years ago and just everything was creaking and it's just oh it's weird why don't you tell us more about that Sri Lanka experience <laughs> oh my god okay so I I had been in Sri Lanka for quite a few days by at this point and I had taken the train from Ella to Candy which is a very you know pretty popular train ride it's one of those kind of old school trains where you see people hanging out of taking all the selfies and the photos those and Instagrammers it, yeah raise his hand and uh and so I I finally get to candy spelled with a k and I get to the train station and you can get to where you're going via tuk-tuk there and I have my GoPro rolling at this point it's raining it's moody which is perfect for what was about to ensue and uh and what's really odd is that I could look back and see this footage and the foreshadowing of what was to come because I get in this tuk-tuk and the guy's like, okay, where are you going? I'm like, Helga's Folly, just like on top of the hill, I think. And he looks back at me and he's like, what? You're going there? Everybody who comes out of there leaves crazy. And I was like, huh? I'm like, who are you? Like, what's this guy talking about? Just get me on my way. And I'm like, I think I kind of just like laugh it off in the video and on we went and I didn't really think twice you know I didn't think anything else about it and we went in the pouring rain in the tuk-tuk to the top of the hill to Helga's Foley and I get there I check in it's monsooning outside at this point and I don't see I don't notice any other guests there but I'm like oh well maybe they're off exploring it is the middle of the day so I waltz past all these creepy corridors 
and put my bags down in my room and I'm vlogging this whole trip and I'm like, I've got to go show case what's inside of here. It looks like it's from the 1930s and some hoarder lived here for many years. There's all these trinkets, dust, cobwebs. It is, it's like a hoarder's paradise and the murals on the walls. It's wild. Like I will have to link the YouTube video just so we'll you link can the see. YouTube video. It's wild. And I'm just walking around in wonder and awe at this place, like pretty creeped out, still not seeing any other guests, still not seeing any other guests. So, uh, it's time to eat dinner. I ate dinner there, still monsooning outside. It's odd. Um, I do see some other people at dinner. And what's weird is I remember seeing some other UGA grads at dinner and I'm like, this is so weird. And they're like, Oh, they're like, Oh wait, you're staying here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, are y'all not? And they were like, no, we just came to see it and came, you know, to, to eat dinner here. And I was like, oh, huh, okay. Like, huh, cool, me too. <laughs> like, okay. I thought that was weird. Um, finished dinner, said our goodbyes, went back to my room. I vividly remember like doing, being on the computer in this room. Meanwhile, this room was bright pink with painted monkeys on the wall. It was weird. <laughs> anyway, I'm like paying bills this night. Like I'm doing like life on the road stuff, talking to my mom. I remember being like, mom, this place is so weird. You should just Google it. Just to like Google image it just to see what it looks like. She Googles it and she goes, did you know it was haunted? This is the first thing that came up on Google. That's not what you want to hear from your mom. <laughs> Literally, it was one of those moments where you kind of like freeze. You, your bot, your, the blood drains from your face and you're like, yeah. oh my God. And it all just like clicks and it's not at this point right oh yeah it's like 11 p.m okay mm -hmm. you're still in, still you, monsooning you're in it <laughs> i'm in it oh oh i'm real deep in it and uh, i'm like that's weird As, this is still when i was taking ambien way back when and i just needed it you know sleep on airplanes sl sleep mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. and i'm like well huh okay i wish i had never saw that information but i think it's time like i go to sleep so i hang up with my mom I do see like, you know, the reports of it being haunted and I'm like, this is really weird. Like I, sh I should have done more research, but I was actually um, referred to it by a an acquaintance at the time whose parents lived in Sri Lanka. So I didn't really think anything of it. I just trusted her. You got the referral. It's all good. Yeah. Not. So <laughs> I vividly remember I was like, okay, I'm about to just, I'm just going to take a shower, pop an Ambien, pass out. I only have one night in this hotel anyway. It's fine. So I vividly remember closing my laptop, standing up and seeing the cabinet in front of me close ever so slightly. And it was like, yeah, blood had already drained from my face. Now it was like draining from my body. Did it have the creak too? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, it did. I would just <laughs> wish I had the camera rolling at that point. <laughs> so oh my God. at this at this point, I grab my phone and run downstairs to the lobby. I wish I could, I'm going to paint the picture to get to the lobby. You had to run through about five super dark, super creepy corridors, but out and outside my bedroom was two, were two creepy baby cribs. Like I'm talking like 1960s mm -hmm. baby cribs outside my bedroom door. Yeah. That was weird in the video. You guys will see it. That was super creepy. Uh, everything's creepy. So not only did like, I witnessed this ghost close the cabinet. Sorry, not close the cabinet door. It opened. The cabinet door opened on itself. Well, that's unusual. It didn't close. It opened on itself. And so cue me racing through these corridors after that, but not only just like normal well-lit corridors. No, no. They were dark and haunted. you got to see this video. It's nuts. It's nuts. And I can't believe I got it all on camera. Anyway, I finally arrive to the door that goes to the lobby. It's closed and locked. <laughs> You're trapped. I'm trapped inside a haunted hotel by <laughs> myself. So my heart is already racing. And I, this is when I start to panic. Like I'm starting to have an, a panic attack. I'm starting to yell. And I'm like, what does one do when they're locked inside yeah. a haunted hotel? They call it. Somebody's got to answer. Yep. So I call it. I can see the lobby through this glass door. I can see it. And I can see the phone ringing and I can also see nobody picking it up. And so it rings and rings and rings. Nobody comes. And so 
here I am. And I start to cry. <laughs> now you're starting to go crazy. Now I'm starting to go crazy, which is, yeah, what the yeah. foreshadowing, what this man told me at the Tuk Tuk station. What do I do? I'm like, I'll call again. Cause what, what do you do when you're insane? You just, you start doing the same thing over and over. And so I called back and finally on the last ring, this man answers in the creepiest voice. And I'm like, sir, you have to let me out of this hotel. Like it's haunted. I I've got to get out of here. Where are you? Is anybody in this hotel? And within minutes he descends from the staircase. So nobody's in the lobby. We're both, this man and I are both locked in this hotel room. Sorry, this hotel, you know, this hotel before you can get to the lobby. I don't know this man. This is the same man who checked me in and we're alone in this hotel. Thank God, you know, he's a stand up citizen for all I know, because he opens the door, turns on the lights and I'm like, I'm checking out of here. This place is haunted. Like, have y'all ever received like gotten this word before like has this ever happened before and he's like yeah a few times and i'm like what the fuck yeah. and then i'm like i need a cab and he's like well i don't know if that's possible right now and i'm like sir you will get me a cab like get me out of here and yeah he got me a cab what was odd is i was deathly afraid so i had him walk me back to my hotel room which looking back it's like it's kind of sketchy. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is whole, just kind of weird. The whole thing is sketchy. What's the moral of the story here, Les, for our viewers and listeners? Research. <laughs> <laughs> Google your hotel. Don't listen to... So- like, yeah, you're not friends with that person anymore, are you? You referred it. <laughs> I haven't talked to her in years. Um, Thanks for that, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> anyway, he helps me pack my bags and, and takes my luggage down mm. the cre- creepy dark corridors and gets me a cab and then pour meanwhile it's still monsooning outside and i go to this other hotel at midnight you go to the ritz carlton this time <laughs> no because <laughs> that wasn't the ritz <laughs> no no I, don't, I have no idea what i just booked another one in that oh lobby right then and there uh i wonder if it's still there you know what i <sighs> i'm thinking limitless sri lanka helga's folly helga's folly like Let's we Google could it. we could do a Halloween theme here and really get kind of weird. That would be amazing. Uh, here we go, drum roll. Is it still open? It's still open, y'all. Let's go do I Limitless. Have, I, li- I really do have PTSD looking at these photos. Um, Limitless, Sri Lanka, Halloween edition, Helga's Foley. It's so funny because right here, if you Google it, it's a two-star hotel, and it says Helga's Foley Anti-Hotel. Yeah. Truer words have never been written. I want to go back. Uh, well, I didn't. I wasn't there. I want to go and see the, the cribs, the <laughs> random cribs in the corridor. I don't and know. I don't know if I, I think I'm good. I'd love to go to Sri Lanka, though. Sri Lanka is great. Don't let Helga's Folly scare you. Yeah. There are a lot more um, lodging options for your staying pleasure. Well, thanks for that story, Les. Uh, we have a couple more questions I just want to dive into quickly before we finish. All things eating alone in restaurants when you solo travel, do you enjoy it or not so much? I love this because I do think there's some stigma about eating alone, whether it's in your hometown or out and about across the world. And I would say, okay, yes, I do enjoy it. I would say if you're scared of it, start small and go eat alone. Yeah. Go get ice cream by yourself. Get, get some recommendations, like get some good local restaurants, like where the locals eat. Well, start small in your hometown Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And get a little bit comfortable with it. Go oh. sit at a bar somewhere. Yeah. I think sitting at a bar, like just because then people pull up, that's a great way to meet people and just start a new conversation. And yeah. And there's another question here. It's like how not to feel weird eating alone in a restaurant. Just get weird. It's fun. It is fun. Like, I think you don't even have to be like, oh, my God, are people like party of one? Are people going to like judge me for being here by myself? Are people going to question it? Like, first of all, who cares? Yeah. Second of all, you have I think truly one of the biggest skills in life is to learn to enjoy your own company. I think a lot of these questions have come from some introverts and that's totally fine to be an introvert. I am very outgoing, but it's like when you can break that that barrier and that ice of like just not giving a shit about what other people think. Truly go eat at the bar, um, bring a book if you're at a table and 
occupy your time doing that. Um, it's a great way to also meet other people. I think it's important to try and not give a shit. Yeah. Try not to give a fuck what other people yeah. think. It's like I, the subtle art of not giving a fuck is one of the best books. But I do think I remember when I had to like release that into the wind like a long time ago. And it was uh, it was for me not get, not not letting other people people's judgments about you filming content by yourself. Yeah. I had to let that go a long time ago yeah. because like if you if you can't get comfortable creating content by yourself like you, you're not going to survive in this industry. Yeah, that's right. So I had to let that go a long time ago. Yeah. And just by going on reality TV too. I had do to let you, that judgment go. Yeah, do you. And when you do put yourself out there, people will criticize. It's like, yeah, who who cares? Like, you know. You, you won't get anywhere in life. You won't meet anybody. You won't get comfortable with your own skin. Mm -hmm. Like just care yeah. less. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Care less. Yeah. I think we'll finish with this one. Uh, best way to track on discounted flights, advance or last minute? Scotch cheap flights. It's a good one. Even the subscribed portion of it is yeah. really good. You can track them. I think I just got an email from a couple of airlines that, you know, I'm a frequent flyer with all of them, obviously. Uh, and I got an email of some like some flights and uh, destinations that are discounted. Obviously, you have to book in advance. Uh, to get those cheap flights and know you want to go on those dates. Um, but that's just being having, you know, notifications turned on from those airlines when there are travel discounts, get those. Cause then it comes in your email and you're like, Oh shit, I've always wanted to go there. Boom. $600 flights round trip. Let's fucking go. Expedia's flight trackers or price tracking. Um, that's another tool you can use mm -hmm. actual price tracking yep. and they'll send you a notification when the price drops. And it's funny. I used to, um, book, you know, through direct with some of the airlines for work and stuff. And then I looked at Expedia. I'm like, how is the Expedia rate cheaper than the airline rate? So sometimes I guess they must get a better rate because they're buying so many and selling so many fares. So yeah, definitely use all of them. Expedia Kayak. I think another really cool tool that I've always loved, especially if you're craving an adventure, is just doing sky scanners everywhere tool like mm -hmm. type in everywhere and it'll give you like the cheapest places you can go from where you're mm -hmm. currently at yeah and just book that yeah life and is short book the plane ticket yeah and if you have a credit card and you've racked up a bunch of points that's a way to get your flights discounted and just you know use points and pay for the taxes or apply for a bomb travel credit card yeah i love my chase sapphire reserve yeah i love my united club card uh, on that note, Les, that was a lot of information. Thank you, everyone, for all the questions. I feel like we answered. There was a lot more questions here, but we answered them in our build-up. Sure did. I mean, there's so much. We love to travel if you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, last, like, final, like, inspo for people wanting to solo travel, Les, in their 20s and 30s or whatever age. Yeah, I think I just said it. Life is short. Book the plane ticket. Yeah. You know? You never know when something will come up or your responsibilities will get added to yeah. or, you know, your dying day, not to get morbid, but like life is short. I'll say this much as a, an expat from Australia, I'm here because I booked a trip. I wanted to go to the US and go around the country and I, I pretty much did it um, solo and I had the best fucking time. And if I didn't, I wouldn't be sitting here next to my wife. So it could lead you to a life-changing event, like meeting the partner you love. And that is something beautiful. You know, I think that's really cool. If I hadn't moved to Argentina, the road less traveled would not be a thing, nor would this podcast. Yeah. Well, on that note, let's <laughs> leave it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. We will see you next week. Thank you all for listening. See you next week. See ya.